We've all seen the headlines and heard the stories about people trying to upend American history. Our next guest, though, offers a different perspective. He's written a column at carolinajournal.com with this headline, North Carolinians can be proud of their history. The author of that column is Ray Nothstein, opinion editor at carolinajournal.com. And, Ray, I suspect that you were motivated to write this after seeing all of these stories about people who don't seem to understand or appreciate history. Absolutely. I think that's one of the biggest problems today is it's not just a kind of political problem we have, but we have a cultural problem where people don't understand history. Maybe they don't, uh, they're lashing out in anger because of their own ideology. And so maybe they think that attacking history gives them validity or gives them standing in the public arena. And really, I mean, when you look at sort of problems across the globe, whether it be the 20th century, particularly um, forces that attacked history and attacked their own culture ended up uh, creating things like gulags or the Khmer Rouge had a bloody civil war, which killed a lot of people. So I just always a little cautious when you see people um, wanting to tear down monuments or wanting to attack uh, historical figures, particularly ones like that we've seen in recent news, like George Washington and Abraham Lincoln, who are just giants uh, in terms of just uh, what they've done for this country and how that they've helped heal the nation, but also just set it on a, a positive trajectory. This is a good message to send to anyone across the United States, but you focus particularly on North Carolina and its history and, and mentioned a, a number of things. Let's talk about some of them. One of them, especially for those who are concerned about black history, African-American history, uh, we're talking about this was the start of the Greensboro sit-in movement, uh, definitely an important part of our history. Yeah, coming off the heels of Black History Month, I thought it was important to focus on the Greensboro sit-in movement, which really launched the American Civil Rights Movement, it played a huge central role in, in this American Civil Rights Movement. So I think the Greensboro sit-in movement, and of course, I know that uh, Clarence Henderson uh, is someone that we've all heard from recently in the political arena. He was an important figure. He wasn't one of the original four at uh, North Carolina A&T University, but he played a central role. And so these figures, uh, they raised the consciousness of not just North Carolina, but the nation during the post-war uh, years. And uh, so uh, they helped launch King's Movement, uh, the Southern Christian Leadership Council, um, SNCC, uh, all these figures that we know from history, John Lewis, a lot of that got started right here uh, in Greensboro. Going back even further, you mentioned things like the Halifax Resolves and the uh, battles in Kings Mountain and Guilford Courthouse, talking about North Carolina's important role in America getting independent. Yeah, the Halifax Resolves are really the first official document promoting independence, and it really uh, prompted other colonies to support independence. So North Carolina was, was a leader in that arena. It gave the delegates the power to advocate and vote for independence at the at the convention. So it, it was a huge, huge boon for the independence movement and really just the uh, unification of the American colonies, which you hadn't really seen uh, to a large degree before that. And if we value our freedom of speech, our right to bear arms, all of the things that are in the Bill of Rights, North Carolina, you have to recognize the state's role there as well. Right. I mean, there were anti, there was anti-federalist movement in North Carolina that helped secure the Bill of Rights. So there's no doubt that North Carolina just played all these pivotal moments at, at the beginning of America. And, um, you know, another thing that I focused on was the Wright brothers. I thought that was really important because of the entrepreneurial spirit. A lot of times we think we focus on the first in flight aspect of that. And while that was obviously a momentous event in world history, uh, the Samuel Langley, who was another individual who was uh, battling the Wright brothers to be first in flight, he focused on uh, power. And, you know, if we can harness enough power, we can fly. But the Wright brothers understood it was one of balance. And uh, I just made the point, too, that it was the Kitty Hawk weather chase uh, station chief that understood uh, he was very perceptive to the Wright brothers. And that's one of the reasons why they came to North Carolina. They looked at several locations, but because of the kindness of that weather chief, that's one of the reasons the Wright brothers ended up in North Carolina. We're talking about a newspaper-length column, so there was no opportunity to get into all of the great pieces of North Carolina history, but you certainly give people uh, a number of samples. And then you have this line that I found very interesting. While history is often nuanced and complicated, there is much to be proud of in one of the greatest states within the greatest nation in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the United States has been a world leader in helping people to understand freedom. It's been an inspiration 
uh, to freedom, our Declaration of Independence. Uh, people who were in the Soviet gulags or people who were in uh, prisons in Eastern Europe would uh, quote the Declaration of Independence. It was a wild, it's been a widely known document uh, across the globe, obviously, and it's inspired a lot of people. And North Carolina, of course, played a pivotal role in that. We should all be proud of our history. And we see a lot of headlines today where people are bemoaning some of our history. And certainly in a state like North Carolina that dealt with slavery and segregation for so long, there's things to learn from. And there's uh, warning signs about uh, just the the institution of government and how it can uh, lead people against each other or uh, basically create a climate where uh, I think that fosters um, hatred and division. And I don't want to see that again. And I think, uh, obviously, uh, the vast majority in North Carolina don't want to see that again. The column once again has the headline, North Carolinians can be proud of their history. You'll find it at carolinajournal.com. Its author is Ray Nothstein, opinion editor at Carolina Journal. Thanks so much, Ray. Thank you.